of guns will carry. They say, can you really do that? Buckle up, I'll decide. Well, we really don't need our own the second mother. I think one will do. Helmet free? It's up to me. Sometimes I wear one and sometimes I don't. It's that live free or die attitude, and it's attracting some notable newcomers to the Granite State. Karen Pratt ditched New Jersey. We've left our jobs, our family, friends. Amanda Phillips is bailing on the Bay State. I just have to fall in love with it. a state that has live free or die as their motto. They're the advanced troops of a political invasion. Target New Hampshire. The true believers are arriving weekly. Followers of a dream called the Free State Project. The Free State Project, next on Chronicle. Where are they coming to? or Where are they going to land? I don't know if they're going to plan to reside in one community or if they're going to spread themselves out in the whole state. They are coming. Miles, where did they come from? I don't know. It's a coup d'etat. <laughs> in fact, some are already here, living undetected alongside their New Hampshire neighbors. We, can't, we don't even know who they are, you know. They look just like us, you know, and that they're not. The truth is, there is something unusual going on in the Granite State. Call it a mass migration of sorts. The true believers are arriving weekly. Followers of a dream called the Free State Project. Give me some of that shrimp soup, please. We've left our jobs, our family, friends. But you just have to keep hope that there's something better that you're moving towards, and I really think we're going to find that here. Karen Pratt is a former executive at Merrill Lynch. She and her husband, Calvin, recently pulled up stakes in New Jersey and moved to Goffstown. We very much think of ourselves as pioneers. They are one of the first of what they say will be a growing wave of free staters, drawn to New Hampshire by its low taxes, small government, and minimal regulation. The moment I crossed that state line and declared my citizenship in this state, I just gained a, a measure of freedom greater than what I had known previously. The aim of the Free State Project is at once simple and ambitious, to convince 20,000 believers in small government to move to a single state. That way they might just muster the political clout to make their libertarian beliefs a reality. In a hotly contested vote between nine states, New Hampshire was the lucky winner. I didn't vote for New Hampshire when I voted. I moved here so I made a commitment. Jackie Casey may have leaned toward Wyoming, but that didn't stop her from becoming the first free stater yeah, to take the leap. Oh, there he goes. I'm the first porcupine. I moved from Oregon to New Hampshire about four months ago, and uh, I hope the rest of them are ready. <laughs> Did she say porcupine? We call ourselves porcupines because we don't initiate force upon others, but if you mess with us, you're in trouble. You might want to take Casey at her word. A firm believer that an armed society is a polite society, she's a sales rep for a firearms training camp, and her familiarity with weapons has landed her work as a model for action comics. I don't have any bombs. <laughs> you know, most of the time, not. <laughs> don't make me mad. <laughs> Governor Craig Benson has laid out the welcome map to the newcomers, signing on as a friend of the Free State Project. But not everyone feels so warmly. I'm perfectly prepared to welcome people into New Hampshire. Um, I'm not sure I'm thrilled by the notion that folks are coming here to take over our political culture. Peter Burling of Cornish is Democratic leader of the New Hampshire House. My message would be to anybody who thinks about coming here in groups, uh, why don't you first of all study who we are and how we currently think uh, before you start to talk about how you could come here and improve the way we think. We wouldn't have chosen New Hampshire if we didn't think that we would fit in there. Amanda Phillips still lives in Massachusetts but has signed on to the Free State Project and plans to move with her eight-year-old daughter next summer. She says talk of a takeover misses the point completely. That's the ironic thing. We don't want to take over anything. We want government out of people's lives. In fact, 
Given her druthers, Phillips would rather take down the system than take it over. The Free State Project aims to reduce the size of government by around two-thirds. Personally, I think it should be three-thirds. You see, this personable accountant from suburban Boston is also a committed anarchist. I just think that, that most of the functions that the government does, that, that we can certainly do better if left to our own devices. So just what is it about New Hampshire that draws anarchists and financial executives alike? Well, maybe it's what's not here. No income tax, no sales tax, no helmet laws, no adult seatbelt laws. And get up north of the notches and there's no telling what you'll find. Yes, these are real guns and real ammunition. Well, it's not that I want to show off, but I want to say, look, we can do this if we want to. And most Saturday nights, Don Mooney and the Dalton gang head out to a local restaurant armed to the teeth. Well, a lot of times when we go out, especially folks from, uh, I hate to say it, Mass, uh, they say, can you really do that? And the fact is we can because there is what they call an open carry law in the state of New Hampshire. The Dalton Gang is a cowboy shooting club. They love their single action vintage guns and they love their freedoms. Anything above the notch, you're free, you're pretty much. <laughs> in the warmer months, you might catch Joel White tooling around Dalton on his motorcycle with his dog, Prince, or walking around with his 20 gauge sawed off and 245s. Not surprisingly, no one has tried to tell him what he can and can't do on his own property. I put a 75 foot tower up at my house to put an antenna on it and a wind generator. Didn't have to tell the town anything, didn't have to ask for permission, just did it. Now that's freedom. That's interesting. They brandish them openly. You can. I mean, there's nothing to say you can't. I think back to, uh, was it Huey Newton that walked into the California State House carrying a shotgun one time many years ago? The problem is you know, a concealed weapon. That's where you get into trouble. That's when you need a, a permit, Mary, even in New Hampshire. And we should point out that Amanda Phillips, she says she's an anarchist, but she doesn't want the whole group branded an anarchist group. And in fact, we found libertarians, Democrats, and Republicans as members of this group. Still ahead, fighting the nanny state after this. Coming up later, house hunting for the revolution. Coming up next, running for state rep. The platform? Leave us alone. You're watching Chronicle with Peter Mahegan, Mary Richardson, Ted Reinstein, and Mike Barnacle. Chronicle, New England's nightly news magazine. After the British Parliament and the U.S. Congress, the largest English-speaking legislative body in the entire world is, believe it or not, crammed into the little state of New Hampshire. It's 400 members, a colorful cross-section of average citizens, firemen, farmers, housewives, and school teachers. Which makes the reps in particular easily accessible to the individual, whether you've got a compliment or a complaint. Howard Wilson of Andover, New Hampshire, is running for state rep. Not because of the pay, 100 princely dollars a year, no. Nope. He's running because he's passionate about his state's motto. Live free or die. It says, in effect, that we, the individuals resident in the state of New Hampshire, use that middle finger which shouldn't be displayed in public and pre present it to any other individuals who would impose on us, leave us alone. New Hampshire has, has a long history of not wanting the state or the government to tell them what to do. They're very independent. And it's that suspicion of governmental